I mean, playing Derek is, is a pretty big departure for me. Um, he's an absolute maniac who is, you know, f high on power, high on money, and high on many substances. Um, so I typically try to stay away from a lot of those things myself. Uh, but it was just going into the headspace of somebody who is just on a tear and his ego and narcissism are just like firing at levels that no one should ever experience. It was, uh, it's a lot. It's, it's exhausting, but it's really fun to just tap into a whole other side of yourself that you didn't know existed and you kind of find out it's scary that it can't exist. I found it very funny. Um, I think that there's like a real dark humor that's kind of throughout and, and working with David Ayer as well, he's got a very dark sense of humor that he pulls out of scenes and moments that are very unexpected. So I thought it was just an enjoyable read. I think that the, the story of revenge and like what does justice really look like? What does one man's justice look like compared to other people's and, and just kind of what violence and destruction can, can become if you let vengeance kind of take hold of you? Derek is, uh, he's in an interesting spot because he comes from a lot of money. His family is like titans of industry with shipping and old oil money. So he feels kind of untouchable in many ways. And he's made most of his money legitimately through crypto, NFT, and he's got a really fast, intelligent kind of uh, business mind. But he kind of has this dark secret on the side that's his passion project, which is very evil. And that's when, you know, he runs these centers that basically rob older people of their life savings. Um, and I talked with David a bit about why. <laughs> like, why does Derek do this? Like, he has the money, he has power, why does he want this thing? And I think it kind of comes back to what we sort of landed on was he wants something that's his dirty little secret that no one else can touch. That, and, and operating outside the bounds of law when his mom is, you know, the commander in chief. There's something that just gets that part of him going of, of wanting to be as powerful as possible. So he has this dark, secret, nasty little little side, side hustle that brings in a lot of money as well. Um, and ultimately it's his, uh, his downfall. Working with David has, has been incredible. I mean, you know, we go from shooting a scene where he'll come up and give you like two words of direction about like, tell him about the machine elves. And you're like, the what? He's like, the machine elves. Like when you smoke DMT, and you go to the other dimension, the machine elves mock you, and then you go back. So tell your mom about that, which I think is very funny and dark and very, Dave, uh, very um, Derek-like. And then the next moment he'll come to you and he'll tell you, like the piece of direction he gave me in one of the scenes with Gemma, who's playing my mom, he was like, all of us just want to love and be loved with the tools that we have. And then you're like, shit, okay. Wow, now I gotta bring that into the fold. So he'll like work you into one space and then kind of bring it to another very grounded human emotion space, which I think is just really, it's really enjoyable. And for me as an actor to get to play with that kind of range of, of direction is really, really great. Dave and I had a few conversations about this as well. And uh, you know, I think that there's a part of Derek that is projecting his father onto Westwild and kind of He's in a position of power over Westwild, so there's, there's a part of Derek that enjoys just messing with Westwild and kind of making him do whatever he wants. In a way, it's kind of like the thing of, of being more powerful than your father and, and wanting to like supersede everything that they do and, and become a better version of them. So I think that he projects a lot of that onto Westwild. I think Westwild is just holding on for dear life with whatever this kid's about to do wrong to get them into even more trouble. So it's. It's, it's a very fun dynamic, and Jeremy Irons, I mean, obviously he's you know, a legendary actor and he brings such power and, and, and weight into every moment. And then to get to play the character that's kind of bullying him as this like younger, like shithead kind of guy, I think it's really fun. And uh, it's created a lot, of great, a lot of great moments. Derek, when we start this film, feels invincible. He feels that no one can touch him, nothing can bring him down. And, and at first it's a, it's a nuisance, it's like this, and he says it in the script, I say that he's a crash test dummy with a gun. And that's kind of what he views Clay as for most of the movie until he's literally blowing open the doors and taking care of business. So I think that, you know, it starts off being a nuisance and basically Derek's a guy where he just is like, it's not my problem. Like I pay people stupid amounts of money. You guys fix this. Like, don't bother me with all this nonsense. Like you had some guy who got pissed off. Okay, cool, whatever, like go do your job. And that's very much Derek's mentality until it's inescapable and, and uh, things come all, everything comes crashing down. Derek is kind of 
isolated a bit in his own little world, and his world really consists of West Wild and uh, his mom, who is, who is Gemma Redgrave, who's a phenomenal actress, and again, like, a powerhouse. So I get to be this, like, annoying surrounded by powerhouse actors, so just so it's really fun. Um, but, but Gemma was incredible, and, and she, as well as, you know, as, as Jeremy, and with, with David's direction, just find these very nuanced, truthful moments, and, you know, David will be giving her direction about like, you're gonna walk in, you're having a cigarette, and you guys like used to do drugs together. So it's like, okay, that's one way of looking at the mother-son relationship. And the other, and then all of a sudden he'll tell her, now all you care about is wanting to see your son survive this moment. And so in, in just having actors that are as dynamic as, as Gemma and, and Jeremy, to be able to take those directions and run with them, but yet keep them very grounded, it's a, you know, it's, it's, it's a blessing that you don't get very often. Eric was originally written as kind of very dapper, very clean cut, put together, three piece suit kind of guy. Um, but then when I came on board, David's vision of Derek started to change and uh, we just leaned into this guy who has so much money, not really any sense of style, but just needs to be like big swinging. That's like his whole thing is like green is his color, money, power, gold, green, like that's his world 100%. And, uh, and then we decided, I was, it was funny, because after I, when I did the Hunger Games, they had my hair bleached blonde, and I hated it so much, like the whole process, and it was so annoying. And I said, I'm never dyeing my hair blonde again for a project. And then the moment I got the call from the hair and makeup team, and they're like, hey, so we're thinking about maybe like bleaching your hair. I was like, oh, that sounds amazing, let's do it. I completely forgot about like all of my past ideas of what I would or wouldn't do, um, which is a very me thing to do. But it, uh, you know, I think that having this crazy hair, he's got, normally he has like a diamond gold stud earring. He's got, he mixes patterns, like I've got this floral, I don't even know what, silk with like snakeskin boots, it's just, he's, He's so out of touch with reality, and I think that trying to express that through his clothing as well um, was, was really enjoyable. I only got to shoot one scene with Jason. He's a delight, he's an absolute workhorse, and that guy is like, is like a fine watch. It's like perfectly tuned, he's always on it, he never misses a beat. Um, and you know, from every time that I was shooting my scenes, he was on the second unit action stunt team killing hundreds of people. Like, this, this man was just nonstop working. Um, but I didn't get to spend a lot of time with him, unfortunately. The Danforth compound, I mean, that's really the, the whole climax of the movie takes place there. And, um, you know, we've gone through a lot, especially Clay has gone through a lot to get to that point in the story. And uh, it's just the walls are, are falling around Derek. And, you know, he's kind of gotten to this point where he's in blind rage, uh, Coke and whiskey fueled rage. And, you know, he's basically watching as what he thought was impossible was actually becoming possible, which is that someone can get to him and someone can take him down. Um, but it's, shooting that was, it was, it's a monster. I mean, you know, it's probably like 18 pages of the script happened there in that compound, including multiple huge scenes between me and, and Gemma where I'm, you know, pleading with her and begging her for her love. And it's just like tempers at an all time high, like voices cracking, like emotionally very, very strenuous. And we did, we did one take, it was like a six page scene, maybe five page scene, and we did one take where uh, David wouldn't cut, he would just reset and reset and reset. It ended up being like a 30 minute take without cutting. And we're like, my heart was pounding, I was dripping in sweat, it was just very like physically exhausting. Um, but I enjoyed it, it's really like, when you, when you get to a point where you've done, you do a take that's that long and you're just worn so far down, you find new things and like, you express things in ways that are then you then you differently than you normally would approach them. So it was a joy and uh, a mountain to climb for sure. It's hard to really describe this film, but kind of what I've been telling people, like the short version of it, is it's like an epic vengeance story about a guy who has a very peculiar set of skills. He keeps bees, which is very weird, but he's also part of this large organization of beekeepers that are these super secret kind of government high level assassins basically and I get on his wrong side and he basically is on a, a kill streak of trying to to get to me to take down this this evil corporation that I've set up which robs old people of their life savings so it's a story of, of searching for justice and really like what does justice mean and how that looks for different people's perspectives I think that this film obviously is gonna have insane sequences of action you know with Jason at the helm and just kicking ass and cars exploding and it's gonna have all that stuff and, and done in a very 
unique dynamic sort of fight choreography way. But then also, it's just a badass story of, of vengeance about one man whose desire to, to bring justice to someone, uh, he'll stop at nothing. And so it, it's that, it's also funny, I think. Maybe it's just my twisted humor, but I think it's darkly funny. And my character is so ridiculous, he's laughable in so many ways, but always grounded in reality. So it's, it's, just, it's a dark, grounded action comedy that's hyper-violent. It happened to my great-grandma, which is funny. I just actually just now realized that. Like, my, my great-grandma, this is probably a few years ago, she's still alive. She's like 94 and drinks bourbon. She's amazing. But she was, uh, one night, she calls my little brother, and she's like, Connor, I can't, I can't take this anymore. You have to tell your family. My brother's like, Grandma, what are you talking about? And, and she's like, Connor, don't, don't, please, I can't take it anymore. He's like, he's like, Grandma, I don't know what you're talking about. And she was like, you called me two nights ago and said that you got arrested and you'd had too many glasses of champagne after someone's wedding and you got arrested and you needed money to get you out of prison, but not to tell anybody. And my brother's like, oh no, no grandma, that, I didn't do that. She's like, yes you did. And she, I guess like somebody called her and she went to like Walmart and bought Apple gift cards and then scratched off the back and then read the, like did that whole thing. And it's evil, man, it's evil. And like my grandma is such a sweet woman. <laughs> And like, she wants to help everybody, but she is susceptible in ways, you know? And, and she answers the, her house phone, which she still has every time. And it's just, you know, it's, 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 it's evil. It's, 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 pretty, it's pretty dark. I'm on Clay's side, man. Get him, take him down, take me down. <laughs>